So this session, Interview Skills Technique, today, uh, it's one of a series of sessions that provided by the Employment Department uh, at the Multicultural Association. And you can find the schedule of different sessions that the department provide in resume, building, cover letter, um, job search techniques, and networking techniques, and so many other topics that the employment department provide in different sessions to the, uh, to, to the clients of the Multicultural Association. And you can find the, the schedule in the Facebook group, the employment Facebook group, or the uh, main Facebook group, the MCAF Facebook group. And also there is also another uh, interesting session. Uh, it's called Ask an Employment Coach, where you can come and um, ask or put all the inquiries that you have about employment, about job search, or resume, anything that comes to your mind about employment and uh, job searching, you can come to that specific uh, session, ask employment coach and provide your inquiries. So one of these series is uh, the session of today, which is interview skills. We're gonna talk today uh, about how to prepare yourself before the interview how to get ready and how to perform well during the interview. And we're gonna touch base on the STAR technique, one of the most popular uh, techniques uh, of answering questions, specific questions, competency-based questions. And uh, we're gonna talk also about other common interview questions and then what to do after the interview. So how to prepare before the interview, um, just to put in mind that you have gone through different phases before you arrive to the interview phase itself. So you have done your job search and you seek for, for opportunities and search and apply to recruitment agencies in uh, virtual or in person. And you build the resume, a good one, that draw the attention of the employer, the hiring organization, and then you have been invited to the interview. At this point, you don't want to miss uh, all the efforts that you did before arriving to the interview process. So you need to prepare and prepare well, because this is, uh, this is the time when you pick the fruit. You know, you did the homework, and you succeeded to draw the attention with your resume, with your good resume, to draw the attention of the employer, and now you are invited. So what to do? You need to be prepared. The setup, whether it's virtual setup or in person. So if it is a virtual one, you need to download the, prop, the proper application of the interview, whether it's Zoom or Team, or the one that, uh, recommended by the employer uh, to, to set the place in a professional way, set a professional background, arrive earlier, five to 10 minutes, if it is a virtual one, or if it is in person, then uh, arrive 15 minutes, prepare for the ride to take you to the, to the venue of the interview. And of course you need to dress professionally whether in front of a laptop or in front of, uh, in person, in front of the employers themselves, you need to dress professionally. And uh, take care of the system, of, uh, if you want to wear a headphone to make your voice clear, you need to prepare the setup at the beginning. This is number one key uh, of success of the interview. And then get prepared questions wise. So you need to anticipate what type of questions that uh, you're going to receive at the interview. And how can you do that? You need to start with your resume. You need to read what you have sent to the hiring uh, department. Because um, as you know that 
your resume needs to be customized and tailored to the job posting that you are applying to. So you might have different resume. You need to take care of the resume that draw the attention of the employer, read exactly what you have put there and compare it and match it with the job posting uh, that you are applying to. So in order to figure out what kind of questions that might arrive and we will see, um, uh, we will see uh, after this type of questions. Practice, make more practice, stand in front of the mirror, in front of your friend and try to practice your pop. It's a part of a public speech skills. When you are trying to, uh, to uh, when you do a, an interview, it's a public speech skill. So practice, so as to, uh, to uh, eliminate any tension or stress. And also know about the organization that you apply it to, search about it. If you have a friend working there, call them and ask about this organization, check the website, look at the mission and vision and the values, and uh, look at the, the population this organization is serving. And why is that? Because the organization will gonna ask you, the interviewer will gonna ask you about their organization. You need to show interest and they need to know if your goals are aligned with the goals and the values of the organization. And it, it will help you to tailor your answers down the road, down uh, while you are, have been interviewed. So it will help you also uh, to ask a better question, if you've got an opportunity to ask, knowing about the organization that you are doing the interview for the job, it will help you. And it will provide an impression of that you are interested in this organization. So now we're gonna move how to perform our, or how to deliver a successful uh, answers during the interview time. Putting in mind, keep your responses and uh, your presence in the interview, keep it formal. The employer doesn't know you. They just know you from the resume, from your technical skills. So in order to play it safe without risk, keep it formal and try to, to demonstrate the skills, your unique skills while answering the questions. Try always to, uh, to highlight your strengths. Try to highlight the, your abilities that matches with the job you are applying to. And be confident. Practice, prior practice will give you this confidence, confidence while you are talking uh, and answering the questions. Take your time. No need to rush and no need to rush the employers. So it's okay to ask the question again. It's okay to ask them, could you please uh, say again the question? Or would you please give me a moment to think about an answer? It's okay. It's better to, uh, to look calm and quiet and confident rather than to provide, um, uh, to provide an answer that, that is not a good answer for the question. Also, uh, some of the etiquette on uh, protocols of the answering is to provide a short, um, not a short one, but to keep your answers uh, in one minute and one minute and a half long, not more than that, unless it is necessary or unless they, um, um, the interviewer asks you to provide more explanation. And make sure to stay uh, on the track of the question. Do not go providing the stories here and there and lose the main points of the question itself. And if you are not sure about an answer, you can ask for a time to think. Uh, would you please give me a moment to think about this question? Or I don't have, um, I don't have an answer now. Um, I, I, will, I will come up with, uh, with an answer maybe. Uh, after the coming question or something like that. It's okay. It's always better 
to provide a good answer to the question more than to provide um, just a, a weak answer to the question. And here are some tips also during the interview. As I said, pause, uh, do not rush and do not interrupt the, in, the interviewer. Do not interrupt them, make them complete the sentence, complete the, uh, the question. And when providing your answer, provide it slowly and calmly and give them a time to write down because the interviewer is writing your answers. So give them a time uh, when you are talking uh, so they can write down the main points or the highlights of your skills and uh, competencies. You don't want them to miss something important. And remember that you are not the only one that they are interviewing. Usually there is a list of at least four to five um, uh, another interviewees, another applicants. So it's not only you. So start, shine in this interview, provide uh, them time and provide yourself as well time and watch out for your body language, whether it's a virtual or in-person interview, watch out for your non-verbal communication and the smile. Always complete your answer with a smile and just start it with a smile and listening with them, showing that you are relaxed. And now we move to um, an important and popular part of interview questioning, which is called the competency-based questions or behavior questions. And the excellent and proper way to answer similar questions is using the STAR technique. And what is the STAR technique? The acronym stands for situation, task, action, and result. So the STAR method is a method of answering the competency-based questions using these uh, components of the answers. And why? Why do we need to structure our answer for, for these specific kind of questions? The STAR techniques, as I said, is a way of answering specific type of questions, which is called competency or behavioral based questions. And these comp what is competency? Competency is a knowledge, it's a skill that required to perform a job uh, to its best, to the optimum way of performing a job. And what is behavior? Behavior is the indicator that you are having. It's the observable indicator that you are having this competence and uh, the required skills, knowledge, all these are the same label of the same thing. It's, uh, it's either competency or skill or knowledge or ability even. And the behavior is, is the indicator of that. So why it is needed? Uh, it is based on the psychological theory. It's a psychology theory called previous behavior predicts future behavior. So the employer is using this psychological theory in order to know if you have been in specific situations uh, in the job, and how did you handle and manage this situation? So it's a technique to know if you have actually gone through this specific situation using this previous behavior, predicts future behavior, previous success, predict previous uh, future success. They're gonna ask you about the specific situation. They're gonna ask you, to tell me about the time when you have so and so, or when you have been in a specific situation. And why is that? Because they want to prove they have your resume in front of them and they have your certificates and education, everything is written well and good, but they just need to hear from you uh, and to seek a proof and evidence that you have actually gone through this specific kind 
of situation and that you demonstrated the proper competency and behavior needed to this uh, to, to, to manage this or to deal with this situation. And remember, the competency-based, uh, it is there in the, job, in the job posting. What are the kind of questions? You can find it in the job posting. They will ask you uh, the skills needed for this job. It's, for example, teamwork. Um, it's, uh, it could be communicating effectively, problem-solving skills. Skills means competency, uh, problem solving competency, communication uh, effectively. All these are kind of skills. Remember in the job posting that you need to know because the competency thing, it's, it's a big science now. It's becoming a big science in the HR. They are doing what is called competency-based management. So for one competency, they cascaded to all levels in an organization. Uh, for example, communicating effectively. The communicating effectively at the level of the management is different from the communicating effectively skill at the level of supervisor, at the level of officer, at the level of a laborer. They all use communicating effectively skills, but in a different dimension. So, do you need to know all about this? Of course not. You just need to know about the competencies in the uh, job posting and related to your resume and to think what kind of job that you are applying to. The communicating effectively. Competency for a teacher in a school differs, of course, from communicating effectively from a chef in a restaurant, a security guard, a nurse in a hospital. So you just need to think about what the employer actually want to hear when I tell them I have communicating effectively skill. So you need to put this in uh, the STAR technique method, put your story, uh, when, whenever you have been asked, tell me about a time uh, that you have gone through um, a difficult time with a coworker. You have a conflict with a coworker. You need to mention the situation. Here, the start technique, the situation. At this point, you need to tell about when, where, uh, your previous employer, the job title, and the tasks. What is needed while you were doing that job and while you experienced that situation. What was your role? What was the task that needed from you? And then go to the action of the story, telling in details what happened. And here in the action area, you need to show all your competencies, all your abilities required for that job why you are telling the story, the detailed story. And then afterwards, of course, you need to close the story, not to leave it an open one. What was the outcome of that story? And it needs to be a successful one, of course. We don't want dead bodies at the end of the, uh, of the, of the story. So it needs to be uh, a positive one that ended with a reward, with a thank you email from the supplier, with a reward from the management, or uh, increase in the customer satisfaction by 30% from last year, something that's solid, that uh, could help you to provide a solid uh, example of solving uh, the situation. So now we're gonna talk about uh, Example, I'm gonna show you an example of using the STAR technique. And the question is, do you have experience in helping to organize an event? So the question we are now um, breaking down the question. Do you have the specific competency? How, where, and when? And I'm gonna let you read for a minute the answer for this question. 
and give me your opinion about it. What do you think about the answer or response of the interviewee uh, to answer this question? Let's read it. So what do you think? What do you think about this answer? Did uh, this applicant cover all the star technique components or not? Anyone? Anyone would like to share? I think uh, uh, he has not covered all uh, 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 techniques of the star techniques because I think uh, the situation is missing. Um, uh, yeah. The situation yeah, right. first, uh, yeah, and uh, 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 he mentioned um, his experience before he uh, mentioned this role. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, he, he, uh, he should first mention his his role, then uh, he mentioned his experience. That's it. Uh, yeah. I know. Yes, yes, Mustafa. Uh, you are right that the situation is not fully covered, but for the um, uh, for putting which one before the other, it's it's okay. It's okay to put the year and the uh, the where the previous employer before putting the the uh, the job or the task. It's okay, but you are right uh, that uh, the situation is not fully covered, and the actual is not given in full details. And also we don't see a result out of this. We don't see a result out of this, uh, of what the applicant said here. Looking here uh, to this. Why, why, what, what was the reason? Why is the use of that, of the confer, like why he did that and how he delivered it. So he should have given more specific answer to that. Yes. Yes, he should, he should give more, uh, the applicant should give more details about the tasks. Why, yes. why yeah, relating to, to the role that he is doing. Um, so yes, if looking to this model, this is the, uh, the excellent answer of similar question. Look at the details, look at the first paragraph. So the previous action, uh, the previous answer was only covering the first paragraph of uh, of a good answer. And look at the second, third, and fourth paragraphs. They are all telling in details. And also, as I said, the action area is a good area to demonstrate the competencies that the employer is looking for. Excellent communication skills. Continue to support. Strong knowledge of MS Office. Collaborative. So there are there are communication uh, skills here, teamwork, uh, problem solving, or, and also it showed that uh, the ideas are organized. So the STAR technique provides you with a method to organize your ideas while you are talking. To start with what? And to provide details in what? And then to conclude with what? So the conclusion here, which is the result, and uh, as I said that, you need to close the story. What happened afterwards? What happened is that everything went smoothly, everything was in place, and uh, the applicant was uh, recognized from the management team, and everything went well. So this is the appropriate way of answering the competency-based question using the STAR technique. And by the way, the STAR technique, you can use it in interviews, and you can use it also in written tests or exams, because there are some organizations asking you for, uh, for part of its recruitment procedures is to make exams or tests. So you can use the STAR technique as well uh, when answering written exam and written tests. So to have a successful STAR technique, you need to prepare 
you need to know what you have as competencies and skills and abilities and compare them to the job posting and to match them and to see what, what transferable skills do you have that could go with this job posting to understand the question. If they ask you to provide, for example, uh, give us an example when you were handling a project, uh, a big project, then it's not about the project. It's also about providing your skills in project management, communication skills, uh, documentation skills, communication with the team, team building, problem solving, result oriented. All these are skills embedded within the question. So try to understand the question and figure out what kind of competencies that you can bring while answering the question and provide the full story with a beginning and with ending. And also use the pronoun I. Yes, you are working with team. Yes, you are working with uh, co-workers. But at that moment, at the interview moment or the questioning moment, you have been asked to tell about yourself. What was your role? So you need to say, I developed so and so. I was responsible about so and so. I documented, I sent, I communicated. So in order to focus and to provide your role, the employer is not interested of the whole team roles. It's only about you. And of course, the most important thing, the closure of the story, the situation was providing a result a good outcome uh, of this experience. So now we end in the interview techniques, we end with the competency-based questions using the STAR technique. And we knew about how to pre prepare before coming to the, uh, to the interview. Now we're gonna talk about the common interview questions. There are other questions that doesn't need to be answered using the STAR technique, like what? Like, tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself, it's to tell your qualification. They want to know your experience in brief and your qualifications, again, related to the position that you are applying to. Do not provide your experience and qualifications that has nothing to do with the position. The employer is not interested with the whole story of your life, only interested what, with what you are bringing to us relating to this position. Why do you want to work here? And here the chance. They are asking this. They want to know if your goals are matching with the organization goals. You are not coming here just to, to, to work for a couple of months and then go you are having goals that match the organization goals that you are applying to. What are your greatest strengths? Again, the translation of this question is why we, want to, why we choose you. What is different about you? Remember, there are a couple of other applicants and they will be interviewed as well. So your greatest strengths should be something unique about you to let the employer pick you and choose you among the others. So the strengths means what is unique about you. What are your salary expectations? Also to know about uh, if you are putting a high budget or if it matches the budget of the position. Uh, there's some other uh, interview questions and the underlined one are the ones that we need to use a STAR technique for them. Can you give me an example when you had to deal with a difficult customer? Can you give me an example when you had a conflict with a coworker? And here is a tricky one. Why did you leave your last job? How would you answer similar question? Your answer needs to be a positive one. You left your previous job because you are so searching for a job that would uh, provide you with extra knowledge, with extra experience and the skills. Another question, can you work under pressure or tight deadlines? 
what would be the answer for this one? Sorry. What would be the answer for similar question? Star technique would be a good one. Providing a story instead of, it's not a yes or no question. Can you work under pressure? Yes, I can work under pressure. Yes, I can work under pressure. I have an experience working under pressure, uh, managing three projects, managing a team with uh, uh, 12 team members provide, uh, with deadlines. So here is a time of providing uh, star technique story. What are your long-term goals? Also, this is one of the common questions, just to know if your goals uh, are matching the goals of the organization, if you, are, um, um, if you are planning to stay longer with the company or just to, to work for a short period of time. And the question of, do you have any question for us at this moment? Yes, it's okay to ask the interviewer uh, a couple of questions if you like, avoid awkward questions. Uh, here comes the benefit of reading about the organization before coming to the interview. And you can ask about, I have seen in the website, for example, I have seen in the website that there is a new project uh, running in September in last uh, coming year. And this is very interesting. Uh, this is one of my passion or this, I have expertise also in this kind of projects. And also you can ask about the, the um, when you could hear back from them after this interview. So it's okay and it's good to answer a couple of questions or one question at least when they ask you, do you have any question for us? And don't forget to thank them at the end of the interview for their time and the opportunity that you have been provided. And if that's it, no, there is a final step that you need to do after the interview and after thanking uh, the hiring panel or the interviewing panel, uh, whether in person or virtual, uh, after 20 hours, 24 hours from coming back from the interview, you need to sit with yourself and ask, did I do well? What went wrong? Um, can I do perfect in next time? And also, you need to send a thank you email to the hiring uh, organization uh, to thank them again for their time and the opportunity that uh, you have been provided. And also it will be a good chance at that moment to, to highlight something that you missed at the interview time. If you think there is a key point that you needed at the interview to highlight, it's a good chance to add it in this thank you email as part of follow-up to the employer. Do you need to, to make another follow-up? Yes, you can do that. After the interview with 10 days or after the deadline, uh, the, the, um, the published deadline of the post, you can send the, a follow-up email unless it is written clearly in the post that we will contact or we will communicate only with those who pass the interview. Then you don't need to make a follow-up. Maybe in the future, after a couple of months, uh, if you uh, are interested in this organization, you can ask later on after a couple of months if they have um, any other job posting in their website that you have seen. And here are a couple of samples of the thank you email after 24 hours from the interview. Um, it's a, a thank you, as I said, thank you email. Uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity for the position of mechanical engineer or teacher or whatever. I'm excited. Um, I, I'm, I feel that I, would, uh, I could contribute uh, to the organization. And I feel that I could provide my expertise and share it with, the, with, uh, with your team and things like that. Please, if you have any question uh, or comment, unmute yourself and ask it. 
uh, this is the end of the session uh, of today. Just to, to remind you again, there are a series of other sessions provided by the employment department. Just uh, follow the uh, ads in the um, website, in the Facebook uh, group. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Salafa. Thank, thank you. Hi, Scott. Um, I just wanted to add one quick thing uh, to everybody here. So, of course, interviews uh, are mostly uh, going to be focused on questions that revolve around the STAR technique, but they're not all going to be like that, right? And so um, it's important. I I've actually seen people in mock interviews that I've done, they'll answer every single question in the STAR format. And that's, you just need to be able to differentiate between what needs a STAR approach and what doesn't, right? Um, you know, if somebody asks you something like, what do you know about the company? There, there's no need to be answering questions like that in a star format at all. Um, however, behavioral questions, as Lafa clearly stated, you should be focusing on star techniques. Um, this is not just a technique that will help you. It's actually a technique that most interviews you will face will have. Uh, it, it's... Um, it's just very important. It's not just something, a tip that you should use, or it might help you along the road. It is actually almost integrated in every interview scheme that we've seen. So definitely very important to get that uh, correct, but also just make sure that you're paying attention to how the question is presented and asked to you, because that will help you decide which way you should answer it. Normal yes or no questions, of course, don't need a start technique. Questions that are not behavioral will not need start technique, but um, a good employer will always be mixing a few different types, right? I'd say maybe 50% to 75% will be behavioral techniques or behavioral questions, sorry, and the rest will just be different types. So just make sure you're answering uh, and not only thinking, okay, everything needs to be start technique or nothing needs to be start technique, right? There's always a healthy medium. So um, make sure you're, you're, you're aware of that. Uh, and that's all I just wanted to say, uh, Salafa. Uh, thank you again for, for doing this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Scott, for being with us today and for this uh, useful addition. So any questions, any comments, anything you wanna share? Uh, hi, Sulafa, thank you for a wonderful session. Um, I, I actually love the way you gave the answers and uh, it was really fantastic. I would just uh, request you if you can share these slides with us so that we can prepare most of the answers based on the STAR technique like this. And that would be a great help for all of us, uh, if I say so, on everyone's behalf. Uh, yes, sure, sure, Ramni. Uh, and also the recording of this uh, session, you can find it also in the uh, YouTube channel of the Employment Department. Okay. As well, yeah. Yes.